welcome to online study for you this is a session on c programming aptitude which covers the sample questions from the tcs and qt examination so let's get started so the first question is choose the correct output so this is the program and these are the options so let us try to understand the program and then assess the options so int x is equal to 35 and then we have the main function so this is our global variable okay so this is a global variable and this is the main function here inside the main function we have another variable x so we already have a variable x which is uh, a, you know assigned 35 and then we are again creating another x and assigning it as 15 so and then in the next line we are printing x so what is the output so the option a is are we going to get an error option b is 15 which is initialized here or c 35 which is initialized here in the global part and d some garbage value so what is the answer so if you might be thinking that uh, 35 then you are wrong because of the reason that I'm going to tell later. So if you think you're going to get garbage value, that is also wrong. So the answer is lies between option A and option B. So if you think that you're going to get 15, you're actually right and you are not going to get an error. So how do you get 15? So here's the explanation. So whenever you have a global variable and a local variable, preference is given to local variable first and only then you're going to consider your global variable in any C program. So X is a global variable here. So whenever you print X, if there is a local variable with a same name that is given preference and X is taken from here. So that is our answer. So let us execute the code for this question so that is here i'm going to copy it and paste it in my local ide that is code blocks and i'm going to run it and i'll get 15 as the answer so my option b is the right answer so the next question is what is the output of the code snippet which is given here and these are the options so the first line says that we are declaring an integer array of size 5 so let us try to visualize it so first second third fourth and fifth so this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 and this is my 4 so I am going to initialize it with 5 comma 2 so what happens here is so whenever you do that uh, you're storing 5 here and 2 here so what happens now when you print a of 2 a of 3 and a of 4 so you're printing those here so what are you going to get option a you're going to get 0 0 0 option b garbage value or option c you're going to get an error or option c the 5 comma 2 which you are given here is going to repeat as 5 to 5 again so what is going to happen so remember this whenever you create an array whenever you just create an array as uh, let us say this is my a which looks very terrible so a of 5 and if you just uh, put a semicolon over here okay this is my semicolon uh, which is handicapped okay so this is a and it is an integer array okay there will be garbage values here so but when i'm initializing the only first two vary first two indexes of this array the rest will be initialized with zeros automatically by the compiler and thus when you print a of 2 3 and 4 you're going to get option a as the answer let us cross check this answer with the code that we have here so 
oh gosh okay so i'm going to replace this code with the second question code and uh, i'm going to get zero 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 which is the option a in the options that have been given here so question three says choose the correct option and this is the code and uh, these are the options so printf percentage d percentage d so two integers here and 12 greater than greater than 2 minus 2 great lesser than lesser than 2 what is going to happen am i going to get 6 comma minus 1 that is 12 divided by 2 and minus 2 divided by 2 or am i going to get 1 and 0 some comparison operation happens and uh, you get a binary value or am i going to get 24 and minus 4 12 into 2 and minus 2 into 2 or am i going to get 3 and minus 8 so this my dear friends is a right shift operator and whenever you shift something to right so one right shift will move a bit to the right so let us write 12 in binary so we have 12 okay let us write it in binary so how does it go so we have one uh, you have two you have four you have eight okay so my 12 is eight plus four is 12 so you're gonna get a zero here you're gonna get a zero here so let us add two bits in the left simply okay so whenever I do one right shift it is indicated by greater than greater than one so what happens is this one gets shifted to the right side and one comes here this one gets shifted here and comes here these two zeros get shifted here and comes here and rest all zeros so now it becomes 4 plus 2 what it becomes is 6 that is nothing but one right shift is equal to dividing the number by 2 but in the question we have two right shifts so we have two right shifts so again what happens is one comes here one comes here and the rest are zeros okay so what remains is 2 plus 1 which is 3 so evident from this you can directly choose this option as the answer but let us try to work it out with uh, the second one which is minus 2 lesser than lesser than 2 so so minus 2 left shift so this is a left shift operator 2 so this is exactly the reverse of uh, right shift so whenever you're doing a right shift so whenever you're doing a right shift you are basically dividing by 2 so whenever you are doing left shift you are multiplying by 2 okay so you're doing left shift right uh, left shift two times so that means minus 2 is multiplied by 2 to get minus 4 and this minus 4 is again multiplied by 2 to get um, minus 8 so that is nothing but 1 0 0 0 0 0 so this is 2 whenever you left shift it so this is minus 2 okay so whenever you left shift it one comes here 0 goes here and all these three zeros are in place and another time if you left shift it it becomes 0 0 0 0 0 since this is minus so this this uh, so this placeholder is 1 2 4 and this is 8 and that is why we have minus 8 as the answer which is option D let us execute the program and see if that is the same here also so whenever I execute it I am going to get 3 and minus 8 so that is option D is the right answer the fourth question is what is the output of this program that is this 
program and then these are the options so let us try to read and understand so float n is equal to 1.54 that is the value of variable n which is of float type and then we have printf two percentage f's so that means two floating point numbers and then we have seal of n and floor of n and what the heck is seal of n and floor of n so if you aren't familiar with this so seal of n so 1.54 is a number which is in between 1 and 2 okay so imagine a house okay this is a very bad house okay and so this is a house okay. let me draw a door okay oh this is a terrible door looks like a man hanging on the door okay so this is a house so let us say my this is my house's floor this value is one and this is my seal which is the ceiling its value is two so my n is 1.54 which lies somewhere here which is 1.54 Five, four. Okay, if you are not able to see the dot, so when I use the function seal of n, it will acquire, it will return you the next highest integer that is two. Okay, you may have three here, but you will not get three. You may have four here, but you will not get three. You'll get the immediate next integer. Okay and so that is why you are going to get a uh, 2.0 so this is the answer but let us see so whenever you have floor then below value is considered the next the below integer value okay you may have zero here you may have minus one here but those are not considered okay so the immediate lowest integer here is considered so the answer is 2.0 and 1.0 so 2.0 is not the Rajinikanth's movie I haven't seen it though so if you have seen it also comment down how the movie was okay it's quite old now and let us uh, run the program uh, you're going to get 2.000 a bit of uh, more zeros exclamation and uh, yeah so our option A is the right answer so let us go for the last question that is question number five what is the output of the program that is given here and these are the options for the given program so it says int i is equal to five so i is an integer variable which is initialized with the number five and then you have a for loop where there is no initialization section so in the condition checking section you have a scanf which takes an integer i that is this integer so it is going to take an integer as an input and in the increment decrement section you have printf which is going to print this i okay note that you have a semicolon here okay so this return is not going to depend upon the for loop so you have a semicolon here so what happens so initially the compiler comes here and it initializes i to five and then it comes here okay so let us see the options before uh, trying to understand what is happening so what are you going to get five four three two one a series of numbers or one two three four five in the reverse order or you're going to get an error because there is a scan in the place where you have to have a condition or it is going to go to infinite loop so let us see what happens so the compiler comes here and there is no initialization section it goes to the scanf and it takes an integer as an input and stores it in i so it will replace i uh, where the phi was initially stored and then since there are no statements it directly goes to the increment decrement section from here it goes here and it prints that number and then from here it again comes back here so whatever the number you give is again stored in i and again the control is passed so it is going to do this infinite number of times without stopping and thus option d infinite loop is the answer 
let us uh, execute this program here I have written the program and uh, let us execute the program and see how this works so the prompt is waiting for me to input a number so the code is currently at this place scanf so I'm going to enter say 15 so I got 15 as an output so in the next line I'm going to enter say 999 it gave me 999 it is not stopping again it is again waiting for me to enter a number so I'm going to enter 1729 which is a Ramanujan number again it gave me 1729 which is the printf there and it is again waiting for me to enter a number so whatever the number I enter it is going to give me using a printf so it is not stopping and that is why you have a infinite loop which is option D the correct answer so thanks for watching this video if you have any questions comment it down